Fairy the Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. And a lot of people really like Beatrix Potter because she is the author and the illustrator of these darling little pictures. And right off the bat, you can see that one of her styles is to keep the background as simple as possible and focus on the characters. Now, before we start, I always like to check the date that it was published. And this one was first published in 1902, so 118 years ago this story was written. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the roots of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an incident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took her basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages, but when he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter, who was most dreadfully frightened, rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so, to, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop down on the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed, Ooh, but Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. Rabbits really don't like water. <laughs> I know this because Elena has a few rabbits. And tried to put his foot on Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, go lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room underneath for a fat little rabbit to squeeze. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. <laughs> I don't think I can keep reading. Okay, I will. Then he 
tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish, and she sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go around without speaking to her, for he had heard about his about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the no noise of a hole. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. But Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, and Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight which is two weeks. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave dose, a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon of it to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper.